we uh, have uh, a hospital that I think has ministered almost 170 this year. We have 36 babies that have born <coughs> sick and heroin at our hospital this year. The coroner will talk to you a little bit about this, but per capita, Wayne County leads the entire state of Indiana in heroin overdose deaths, okay? We have approximately 40,000 people. Fort Wayne has 260, and we are leading them by almost seven heroin overdose deaths. So for you guys to think that you do not or will not have this problem, get your head out of the sand because you probably are already moving that direction. Um, I will say that it has been a challenge for us to try to bring awareness to our community. That was our number one goal. We felt as law enforcement, just like many of you in your professions, uh, I don't know what you do, so I can't really say, you know, I'm not a doctor, not a teacher. I don't have those experiences. I'm not a nurse. But what I have is 18 years of law enforcement experience that tells me that starting in 2006, Wayne County started to see this increase in heroin. And as heroin has grown so bad that we are dealing with as young as 14 years old, we saw a 14-year-old girl that probably had the worst track marks, and those are injection sites of anybody we've ever dealt with. We dealt with an 82-year-old that had a heroin addiction that was selling heroin to support their addiction. This is a very dark drug when we talk of heroin. Once it gets you, it got you, okay? I have a little bit of a difference of opinion than most. I feel that heroin is a choice, okay? My wife had breast cancer. That was not a choice, all right? And I talk to these kids all the time about the choices they make. And part of those choices is being able to say no to this stuff. Most of you, um, probably my age, maybe not a little bit older, when I grew up, it was alcohol and marijuana at parties. That is no longer the issue, okay? Kids at 14, 15, and 16 years old are showing up with heroin at parties. They're showing up with cocaine at parties. And it is, it is to the point where if we as a community don't do something different, and we as law enforcement don't do something different, and as my supervisor will tell you, what, three, four years ago, we were doing about 70 drug investigations a year. This year, I bet you we break 250. 250 drug investigations. Now, some of that is because of the mentality of the guys that are working there. Uh, we're very aggressive. We want to go out and make an impact. But we truly felt that we weren't making an impact as much as we could by just arresting people and putting them in jail. That is part of the solution to the problem. We have to hold these people that are dealing on our streets to, to your kids, to my kids, and to everybody else. They need to be held accountable for their actions. However, we put 250 cases in a year together. Are we making a dent? We don't think we are. It's like fishing in Lake Michigan. I can pull all these fish out every day, and I really ain't making a dent in the fish population. So we kind of sat down and said, you know, we've got to be able to think outside the box. How can we, as law enforcement, backdoor this problem to some degree? And we may not see any of the effects of this for years. First thing that we decided to do is we were going to get into the schools. We would meet with every teacher from the middle school age up all the way through high school, and we would try to educate them on what these drugs look like. How many of you in here have seen heroin? Probably less than 5%. Okay. So how many teachers do you think at Richmond High School today, when I presented to 120 teachers, have seen heroin? Actually, it was zero. And, of course, the superintendent and the principal was there, so I could understand why they might not want to raise their hand. <laughs> However, I truly believe that people don't know the problem that we have, and it's our job to raise the awareness. So the teachers that we meet with, we bring in from marijuana to pills to cocaine to heroin, anything that we know these kids are getting their hands on, and we lay it out on the table, we pass it around, and we let them see it firsthand. I can't expect, which I have students at Northeastern, you know, Sun, uh, I can't expect the teachers to recognize what heroin looks like if they've never been trained or educated. So that's an important part of what we've tried to do is to get our teachers to understand if they've got a student, and I'm telling you, it's probably in your school as well as it is in Wayne County schools, shooting heroin up after lunch in the bathroom. He comes back that fifth period and he's nodding off in the middle of the class. You know, and they're not noticing those signs and symptoms. Uh, they now have at least a little bit of knowledge to help us fight this. The second big thing that we felt would be important 
was to bring a presentation to our student population and I, it's really direct in your face. Some people have said it scared straight. Some people have said it's offensive. Some people have said it was painful. Some people have said that that's too real. What better words do you have than to, to describe heroin? Heroin is offensive, it is real, it is deadly, it is all those things. So we have no problem enrolling in a casket into the gymnasium to bring in an inmate who's serving the next 12 years of his life in jail for dealing into the auditorium and set them down in front of these kids. So that is the, the, the kind of the, the first phase is the prevention and education. The second phase we feel is law enforcement doing what we can do, being proactive as we can be. And the third phase is really finding treatment facilities. Do you guys have a treatment facility in Randolph County that treats people that have that level of substance abuse issues? Anybody know? Well, I can tell you this. We've got one that's known for treating substance abusers in our county, and we've really tried to... Um, I, for lack of better terms, hold them accountable to their treatment services. And I don't mean this the wrong way. I don't want Randolph people coming to Randolph County and getting help. I want Wayne County people getting help in our county. I want Randolph County people getting help in their county from their hospital, from their treatment facility. So I would encourage that to be something that you guys need to look at. Something that's important about heroin, and, and the doctor maybe touched a little bit on it, and I tell our students this, 7% of people who ever try heroin the first time overdose and die. 28% try it the first time, uh, have a lifelong addiction. 74% of people who try it a second time have a lifelong addiction. And only 2% of people who ever have a heroin addiction ever recover. That is terrible. So, you know, when I see that short clip of the video talking about doctors prescribing medication I can tell you that is a huge problem that we have as a country okay the United States is 5% of the world's population we consume 80% of the world's prescription medications so when the government comes in like they have in the last five six years and started really uh, controlling and making uh, a lot of restrictions on doctors and them writing their scripts what are all these people who are on, hooked on pain pills going to do now? They're going to be looking for other sources to self-medicate. And a lot of the pain medications being opiate-based, they make that transition to heroin very easy. We deal with everyday people who have heroin addiction. And I'm telling you, from a mother who was eight months pregnant with blood running down her arm to who had just shot up to a 14-year-old to an 18-year-old from black from white, from rich, from poor, it does not matter. For you parents who have teenage kids or, you know, my got a 12-year-old and a 16-year-old, you better be in their ear about the choices they make. Again, these choices are so deadly and so addictive that it literally takes one or two times and either they can die from it or have a lifelong addiction. This is a lot of information that you're going to get tonight. I challenge you as a community. We are a resource the best that we can be for you guys, for law enforcement. I don't want to make it sound like, um, you know, we've got this huge problem and you don't have or you do have because, honestly, I don't know. I'm not buying dope in your backyard, all right? Uh, I know that we've met with law enforcement up here. They're willing to do whatever it will take to help you as a community, and which is what it's going to take. I mean, you guys, you know, how many officers are on the Union City Department? Fifteen. Lynn? Four. Randolph County? Are those 40 people going to be able to solve your community's problems? I can tell you it's not. It's just like us going out every day. I mean, I was so disappointed after a year at the task force going, man, are we making a difference? And I, we, we didn't feel we were. we got to do something different. And we've had several meetings like this in Hagerstown, Fountain City, Cambridge City, and it's continued to grow. I would love to see you guys be able to incorporate something into your schools. And that's something else that I've challenged our schools with. We do not have anything outside. Do you guys even have DARE up here any longer? Yeah, and that goes to probably what, sixth grade? Fifth grade. Fifth or sixth grade? 
What do we do after that? I can tell you, nothing. Now, we can point fingers at the cops all